So while I was doing it in 3D, you know, I would stop and I would build, and I'll show you some of the rough prototypes. We would have laser cut cardboard, you know, glue the body together. We'd sit on it, check it out, but went through the whole process like that. Um, the passes process stuff. The inspiration when we when we start talking about the bike, I was like, I'm going to spend a lot of time and money and energy doing this. So most of the stuff that I was designing up until then was very future focused. So I started thinking about what would stand the test of time better. So I start looking at more retro classic, you know, things. And, uh, was really inspired by, from a design point of view, you know, old F1 cars from the 60s. So we were like, hey, this thing's too long, so we shortened it. 
And then I took the 3D data and I sliced it and I did laser cut uh, cardboard body. We could sit that on the top of the frame, sit on it and see the proportions. So and then the, the, you know, once we were kind of happy with where that was going, I machined a foam on and gave that you know, to the uh, guy in Revival who was building the body. That's all CNC machined as well. I made the, the windscreen in Korea at a company called Model Solution. You can see the dash assembly here. There's Chris Davis putting it together. Chris, poor Chris did a lot of like um, tweaking to get everything to fit you know perfectly, but he did a great job together in the uh, at, at Revival. Exhaust, you know, my original sketches had smooth flowing tubes, but once we once I saw the fabricator putting this together, we were like, it's so cool, like the all the wells is so beautiful. Like that was one of the I think signature elements from a hand fabrication point of view that we just wanted to leave. Um, and there it is after the night. So that gives you guys just I thought that would be a, a, a good setup for maybe dialogue and talk about the build along the way, um, but they give you kind of an idea of the process. Yeah? I went over this bike with him about 45-50 minutes before. Um, talk to him about the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when, uh, when I started this, I bought a set of uh, Rembo, Rembo calipers, and you know, the calipers, they're all ugly. And so I took a set of Rembo's, they're cats, party to witness lines on those. Yeah. Yes. Hang on. Technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so, you know, I was showing those to Alan. I took him and had a, I had a set polished. And he's like, yeah, that's kind of cool, but um, maybe we'll make our own. And so he brought in uh, an engineer from, I'm sure I can't remember which uh, brake company. And they, Design uh, this set, which first was shown on the uh, birdcage uh, bike that Revival did. Mesh and hollow, and it's bitching, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you show it to people, like, oh, you can make a caliper? I'm like, it's a couple of pistons and some valves and like a little fitting that goes in. I'm like, what are you so scared of? I'm like, it's a brake! I'm like, it's a very simple machine. It's a very you know, thing. it's yeah. not that big a deal. Yeah, yeah. The, the cool thing about what he did with the design that I wanted him to mention too was thinking ahead about how he was going to get the replacement parts. Uh, he had this design, so I don't know if they're Brembo or not, but all the brake pads, the pins, the pistons. So yes, he made the caliber, but also he can just go out and get any of the off-the-shelf brakes and stuff yeah. like that. Which again, when I'm building the bike, you know, 20 years ago versus today, it's like I got some I think pretty cool stuff, but you'll never fix it. <laughs> you know, so it's just pretty neat. Pretty much the entire bike was together, and if you were looking at my 3D back in the day, you know, this was kind of a, a blank spot, and we were looking at different throttle body designs, and the, the J63 bike that uh, Revival did had a split throttle body, and it, they cleaned it up in there a lot because they split the, the throttle body apart, but they had to balance it, and it was like, they're like, this thing is a nightmare. Well, the Vincent did do it, you know, Vincent had it in there early. Yeah. It gives you license to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well that's it. Yeah. 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 That's also, Brian, I think vouch for me um, on this one. Like in 2003, I built a oil and frame triumph in the monoshock. Um, triumph bought the bike, they put it in their offices in Atlanta, and nobody did a monoshock. And now everybody, you know, that I see that's where I got it from. You know, this, it, was, it was out there, but just that fast in our lifetime, you know, cafe racer called different culture. It's just now it's all mainstream, you know, partly because media is so fast. But to me, I one of the things that he said to me earlier was being a designer of futuristic products. Uh, I'm probably messing up your quote, but he's like, so many of my products look so dumb in five years or six years, like an old flip phone or something like that. They, they look futuristic when you get it, but five year look at a five year old phone, it looks antique. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so this we, is one of the things. Just super quick. Yeah, yeah. So, 
I don't know exactly where I know the direction I'm going to end up, but there's a whole bunch of surprises that show up, and that's what keeps me excited about it because I go down this path and I end up a little bit to the right or to the left. Here, here's what the, one of the interesting things I totally I, 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 what I did was insanity, like the amount of time and energy that I put into modeling all this stuff. And <laughs> you modeled the wells on the pipe. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, no, I, no, I, was, I was yeah, sad. <laughs> is, you know, like I'm doing a, the, one of the bikes we're doing now is, you know, to, in order to, Brian, like, you know, you know this better than, than I do. Seriously, well, particularly, like, if you look at the, the inspiration I was pulling from was a lot of the stuff that's out there. Like, Kevin and I were downstairs, you know, at the bottom of the elevator looking at the Ferrari F1 car, and I'm like, that's it. Like, that is the archetype for what I was trying to achieve. It is a tube, literally, the motor is hanging out the back, it's beautiful. Like, yeah. that's what, it's that's not just bikes, it's like yeah. 180 cars, yeah. a lot of old classic cars with uh, rolled aluminum bodies that, that Jaguar D-type downstairs. Yes, um, that was not my inspiration board. Yeah, 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 and then now there's outboard motors everywhere. And yeah, some these cool yeah. motors from the 20s and you know, the earliest combustion engines that were pieces of jewelry. Yeah. You know? so, I was so, Brian, I was like, hey, I need to talk to you. You know, that was amazing. So, um, you know, I was glad that we connected and yes, yeah. thank you. I'd like to just say too, uh, I, I went from being a custom builder, which gave me some stuff, but I've been doing a lot with events and even working more on the V-Twin side now, but um, working with some of the MIC and AIM Expo and everything, how important what these two guys are doing for new riders. And I think all of us in here, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, like, you know, keeping young people entertained, keeping stuff. So you're looking at it from design aspect. For me, I look at stuff like this from a, um, a design aspect now because I'm, I've been able to meet and talk and learn from these guys. But the fashion of this is going to inspire 100 people that their dad didn't ride motorcycles. They didn't have a cool uncle or however any of you got into motorcycling. They didn't have that inspiration and now they know this guy because they've got a blue bell and they found out who designed it and then he's now in the motorcycle. So it just inspires and pushes. And whether we like to admit it or we think we're cooler than anyone else, fashion drives motorcycles. They're, they're toys, they're fashionable. We race them, we have fun. So artwork. Artwork, exactly. Whatever, whatever your term is in your head. So thank you so much, Brian, for always doing thank you. Yeah. these guys. But this is really important for our whole industry not just for designers and people, it's really important. One yeah. last question. Yes. Does it work? If you want your picture taken with the end of the ride, he's going to do that now. Yeah. Frank, do you want to come first and get the phone?